part four of our string manipulation series and we're going to be looking in this lesson at the techniques that you can use when you come across questions that revolve around string manipulation. Now this won't cover every single scenario but there are three common types of questions that they'd like to ask and we're going to go, let's go through some techniques that can help you with those three types of questions. So the, the three types is you get basically when you are extracting sections or blocks of text from a string you're not looking at each individual character you're just looking at whole blocks of text you want to copy a whole section from this part of the, the string or you want to copy the end but so we can look at that scenario especially if we want to do multiple um, extractions from a particular block of, of text the other scenario and this is particularly if you're going to check each and every individual character when you know that you're looking at each individual character so if you were doing this manually if you wrote this down on a piece of paper and you were looking at each letter or space or character in the string or the text that's on the page then you would need to traverse the string and check each character and that's the scenario or the technique used for there and then the last one will be creating or building a new string when you want to construct and add on to things um, now, as I said, these techniques cover the majority of the types of scenarios you'll come across, but uh, not all of them, but you'll find most of the time you can use one of these strategies or techniques to help you with the type of questions that you're going to get asked. So let's look at the first one, the extracting sections of or blocks of text. And the, the scenario that you could have is you could have something that's separated by what we call is a delimiter. A delimiter has something that separates the different sections of text. So in this case, we've got surname with a comma symbol followed by name followed by comma. In this case, this is a comma separated file. Um, it's quite common in computers to have these type of files. So the data is separated by a comma. So the comma indicates when the end of that particular section of data has occurred. Um, especially if we don't know how long the surname is going to be or if the surname could be random lengths for different people. Um, so that's what you would use. It doesn't have to necessarily be a comma. You could have different types of um, delimiters. You could have hashes or dollars or spaces even. In, in Basically in our English language, you use spaces to indicate the end of a word. Um, so you, you have those type of um, techniques. So what are we going to do basically? We're going to look at this example where we've got Smith, comma, John, comma, some sort of code number. And we basically, the first thing we need to do is you need to find the position of that delimiter. Um, the first one, that comma, that first comma, we don't want to find the second, we want to find the first comma. So we find the position of that first comma. Once we know the position of it, we know that everything before that comma is our first section of data that we want. So we will copy from one till that delimiter minus one. We don't want to copy Smith with a comma at the end. We just want the word Smith. So you will copy from one to the delimiter minus one. Once we've copied that information, we've got it stored somewhere and we don't need it anymore. And we want to continue with the rest of the string. So we're actually going to remove the stuff that we've dealt with. So we're going to delete from one till the position of the delimiter of that comma. So all of that will be gone. So once that's gone, we now are left with the rest of the string that we want to deal with. Now, the key part here is that we're going to continually do this again, this whole process again. And a lot of people forget that you need to also include finding the position of the delimiter again, because the comma in this scenario will have a very different value to the position of the comma in the last scenario. Um, so we need to find the position of this new delimiter, which is a new comma at a new random position, or not random, but at a particular position. We find the position of that comma, and we're going to copy from one till that comma minus one, and then we delete the rest. And you could have a string that has lots of data separated by commas. So you will continually do this process again and again and again, except for the last section. So once we get to the last section, you'll notice that that section does not have a delimiter. What, when we are left with the last section, that's all, all that's left is what we want. And we can't find the position of the comma and go copy from one till uh, minus one because there is no comma. It'll copy nothing. So when we get to the last section, all we do is we record whatever's left over into wherever we want to store it. So if I had a variable called ID code, I would just say ID code is equal to whatever that string is. I don't need to copy from one till the comma, just whatever is left over. We've deleted all the stuff we don't need. Just, just make it equal to whatever's left over. So that is the technique with extracting sections or blocks of text. 
The other technique is when we know that we're going to be checking each and every individual letter in a string. So if we've got a string like this, and we want to check, we're basically going to use a for loop that goes from the first character till the end of the string. Now, how do we know the end of the string? Well, it's the length of the string. So we're going to go from character one till however many characters are in the string. I don't know how many there are in this. There might, I think it's 48 in this one. So we would go from one to 48 or the length of the string. And we are basically going to be checking each individual character in the string. So we say start from position one. We want to look at that position there, position one. We're basically looking at the string at that position. So let's say this string that we're looking at is S temp. We would look at S temp position one, and then S temp position two, and then S temp position three. Now, do we have a variable that's going one, two, three? Yes, we do. It's our looping variable. So if we had a for loop that goes from for i equals one to the length of the string, then we would say S temp at position r and compare r with whatever we needed to be. If we were checking if it's we want to count all the spaces, then we would check if S temp position at position r is equal to a space then count it or something like that so we're basically going from position one then to position two then position three and four and checking each one individually okay so that's how we traverse a string the last technique is when we are creating or recreating or building a new string when we're adding on things and constructing a string now it's very easy to do if we've got a few components that we need to build. Then you can just use the plus operator to add the different parts. So, for example, if we want to build that comma separate string, we could say s new is a surname variable plus a comma plus the sur uh, name variable plus another comma plus whatever our code is converted from an integer to string. So you do whatever manipulation you want to do, and you can just add them together. Now that's very easy. The problem comes when you've got lots of things to add. Um, that can become quite daunting, or if you've got some sort of loop that's repeatedly adding things. In that case, we need to, like we said, if we add in multiple components, we need to initialize our string to the empty string, and then we add on components individually. So we would say something like s new is equal to the empty string, which is just quote, quote, nothing in between, not even a space, the empty string. So s new has nothing in it. And then when we get to things that we want to add, we just say s new is equal to whatever is currently in s new plus the surname. So in this case, it'll take the empty string, add on the surname field, and then make that the new s new. And then we would go to the next step, which would be, so that's basically we add Smith to s new. Then we would say, hey, let's add a comma onto s new. So take whatever's in s new, which is Smith, add a comma onto it and make that the new s new. So s new is now equal to Smith with a comma, and so on and so on. So you keep adding like that. This looks very familiar. If you ever you remember when we did like when we sum everything in a loop, for example, we said our sum is equal to zero. We initialize it to zero, and then in the loop we said our sum is equal to our sum plus the value that we're adding. That's basically what we're doing here, except for in strings. We're initializing s new to a naught or the naught string, which is the empty string. And then we take whatever's in s new, take what its current value is, and add on what we want to add. Okay, so there, for example, we're going to add on John now. So take whatever's in s new, which was the Smith with the comma, and add on the word John. And that's how you do the different techniques. Now, in our next set of videos, we're going to go through a couple of examples of each of these techniques. So if you're wondering how we can apply this to particular scenarios, just go watch those videos. For more videos in the series, like those videos about the examples that I just mentioned, go to our YouTube channel, uh, go look at our playlist so you can see all the different content we provide. And anything that you'd like, go follow us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, give us your feedback, we'd love to hear from you. And remember, don't do it the long way, do it the Mr. Long Way. <laughs>